Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I was on TikTok for quite a while last night, and it seems to me that there is a trend going around where people are recreating Victoria's Secret Angel makeup. And I thought, you know, I think I want to give my take as well. Like, I watched enough of it that I thought, I'm going to do this too. So, as you can see, I've got my Jumbo Hot Rollers in. This is just my little five piece Con Air set, which actually is like the quickest and easiest thing to do to just give your hair some shape. It's not about um, tight curls, but it's just like a general shape. A big Velcro roller would be great, I think, to achieve the kind of look we're going for. It's soft, voluminous hair. The skin is really flawless. The lip looks kind of like um, a natural baby lip kind of vibe. It's not a full-on nude, but it's got a little soft rosiness to it. And the eye. The eye seems really consistent. I like. I've looked at pictures over the years, and it's like the eye is soft and neutral but they really capture kind of a cat eye thing with lashes and I've got the perfect lash to work with for that um, as well as some eyeliner so yeah let's jump in I'm gonna begin with one of my favorite glowy primers this is my Maybelline perfector four-in-one I love this stuff and I feel like most of the time it has a positive effect on my staying power too. So what this is, if you're not familiar with this product, um, when it came out, it was really compared to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. It does have that like skin tone color, but there is some glow. It's like a highlighter got mixed in with just a little bit of foundation, but the glow is really pretty and this is ultra thin and lightweight. And I love the way it combines with so many different products. Most recently, I paired it with Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator, and it looks so good. Um, today, we're going to go for something that gives us a little more coverage than that. You know what I'm thinking could achieve the perfect Victoria's Secret Angel Skin? The L'Oreal True Match Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. Look, I've used so much of this stuff. I've got my pump on it. I wear it in the shade 2-3 Light. Also in this video, I've got a number of new products from The Balm. Guys, there's some really cute stuff that's like not even out yet that was sent my way and I definitely want to include that. They are just the most creative and cute brand. But I'm going to give myself a pump of this and we'll just dab it around and then blend it in with our e.l.f. Duo Complexion Brush. The thing that's really remarkable about this Hyaluronic Tinted Serum is that it gives a little more coverage than you expect and it stays really well and it doesn't get too tacky sticky dewy you know like it really can have some staying power so i've loved it so much and it'll probably be repurchased before the end of the summer and it just gives this little radiance we're also pairing it with kind of a radiant primer but i'm always happy with the result another thing i've noticed is a really nice bright under eye with the victoria's secret angel makeup definitely going to be working with some lighter tones right in here also you guys did you hear they're bringing back local on the eights for like a small segment of the day i need to look into it more but i'm so excited do you know what local on the eights is it's a weather channel thing from like back when i was a kid you know they would give your local weather info i can't even tell you the amount of times i refer to that i've always been very into weather and like keeping on top of it anyways look how beautiful this foundation is i love it so much now one of my new things from the balm is this antidotes like antidotes you know how they're always witty over there at the balm with their stuff and um this is their new squeezy tube concealer it's clean beauty and green packaging that's their whole vibe this says skincare meets color and it's just a liquid concealer. I have shade number two and I'm choosing that today because I know it's going to be really nice and brightening on me. So I'm going to just squeeze out a small amount here and it's super liquidy, thin, lightweight. So I'm giving myself a few little dabs there and I'll use it elsewhere on the face where I normally would. I know it looks like there's a ton here, but we are wanting a fairly full coverage brightened up under eye. So just bear with me. I'm patching it all around. I don't know why I patched it out with my finger today, but it just felt right. And then back in with the e.l.f. duo brush, and we're just bouncing it. And we're going for, yes, a whole lighter tone up in this area. And I can't stress enough how thin this concealer is. It does have coverage. I wouldn't say it's my fullest coverage stuff, but it's just, it's really lightweight. Incredibly liquidy. Use your little end where you need to. I would call it like a medium 
to full coverage concealer. It has kind of a buildable quality to it, but look how smooth and radiant the surface of the skin looks. It's really adapting well to the foundation look we have underneath, don't you think? A little world's tiniest cotton ball floating through the air. Look at that. Okay, that looks wonderful. Now we're gonna wanna set that with something that's not gonna dull us down at all. I'm thinking this, I think it's Laura Mercier Ultra Blur. I just have been loving this powder so much. If I had my pick of like one single loose powder to keep, I think this would be it. So we're gonna set this, we want it to look flawless. We're getting ready for the runway, she tells herself as she knows she's probably going to end up in a pool or on a playground. This powder is just so pretty because it doesn't look thick at all, but somehow it does make everything look a little more flawless. So I set T-zone and under eye with that. Then I'm gonna do my ultra brightening trick. First off, we dust away any excess. And then I go to my Makeup Forever. It's the HD Skin Twist and Light in the shade light so you can twist it at the bottom. It's gonna crank out a little mixture of the blue, the pink, and the cream. Um, it's in there. You may not be able to see it real well. It's very, very brightening. So I get a little bit on the tip of my brush and I allow that to come in to the um, like innermost corner. Also, guys, what do you think about Bold and Beautiful? Hope and Thomas. I've got a lot to say about this topic. I think the actor who plays Liam is phenomenal. But Liam kissed Steffi and that's a whole other layer to this. Anyway, we have like this additional brightness just from a speck of that powder. I love that. I don't really feel like I need to be set so much all over the rest of the face, but I am in a contour. I want some chiseled stuff happening, you know? I'm gonna use my ColourPop Moonstone Beach because I don't think I've used that on camera yet. This is the tone. These go on really, really well. Nice and smooth. I was watching somebody also on TikTok, they were a professional makeup artist and they were talking about how applying a stick directly to your face is not the way to go. You know, you need to be getting it off on a brush first for the best look. Um, and there are some textures of product, and I'm not saying I know better, but I've used enough of these different sticks. Some of them just blend with so much ease. Like, look at this. It's just so easy to swipe it on directly where you want it and then blend it in. Now, if you had a stiffer texture that was a real bear to blend in, would I say put that on a brush first? Yeah, but some of these, like these ColourPop sticks, M Cosmetics, Persona, I'm barely pressing, I'm barely paying attention. I'm getting it blended in 100% and with ease. And additionally, I'm not disrupting the makeup underneath because I'm not working that hard and I'm not pressing that hard. So that's just my two cents on that. Look at that shade, that's really nice. It adds a little bronziness. It's really contouring me up. I've got this roller now just like hanging out on my shoulder. See, the skin is doing exactly what I want it to be doing right now. I want a subtle glow. I want a really brightened under eye. I want to be kind of chiseled. Um, and I am going to set that a little bit too. Here's another new thing that was sent my way, this little butter bronzer contour palette from Physicians Formula. I do like this. Keep in mind the textures are super duper soft. So a brush hits it and there's powder galore. Also, can we stop this? These kinds of windows where anything could come in and gouge your product. It's so not protective at all. Like we, we do need something solid there, I think. Mm, but it smells so good. I'm just gonna use some of that largest shade there. And you notice I did not scrub my brush back and forth because there's no need. It's very soft, it's very pigmented. And I'm just gonna be going over where I used that cream contour. And there's a nice little cool shade up top as well as a sort of like could set your under eye translucent powder and it comes in a whole deeper tone as well. Do your rollers hang low? We're not really worried about it. We just, again, we want some subtle shape. That's what the five jumbo roller thing is about, you know?
For the Victoria's Secret blush, we're looking for a blush presence, but not a blush statement, okay? A lot of the pictures I've seen, it's not really loud, but it's kind of like just sort of meshing into the contour of the face a little bit. I'm gonna use this shade from the balm. It's called Big Date. If you like this old school pinup stuff, it's so cute what they do. And this is the shade. It's a little bit mauve -y, okay? I'm gonna pick up some of that with my e.l.f. blush brush, and I'm gonna go kind of like on the side here, almost like I'm thinking of contouring with this a little bit, but taking it up a little higher than that, okay? Blush is there, but blush is not like claiming everyone's attention. This shade is good because it's, it's bringing a little heat to the skin, you know, but it's still kind of understated. And then the presence of highlighter is interesting. It's not really over the top in some pictures I've seen, although one of them, it looks like there's a blatant, like glossy nose highlight and a Cupid's bow highlight, but not as much just on top of the cheeks. This is my cookie highlighter from Benefit. I'm gonna do a slight bit on the cheeks, so we're talking just kind of wiggling the Real Techniques setting brush in that. Just a bit. Keep in mind, the skin already had a nice little, like kind of gentle sheen to it with the complexion products we chose to use. So this is just like so barely there on top of the cheek. I will do more down the nose. I'm using the very tip of the brush and just kind of taking it straight down. Not getting real aggressive with that because again, not every look had it. And I'll put some here on the Cupid's bow. We're gonna set this. The last few days I've been testing this professional super setter and seeing how well it actually works. I really do like the sprayer. Super duper fine cloud-like mist. And I like that it just doesn't mess up your makeup at all. No risk of big droplets here. So again, objectives for the skin. We wanted it to look flawless. We want a gentle glow, contoured skin, a really brightened up under eye, and a blush that's not really stealing the show, but it's there. In a lot of looks I've seen, the brows are kind of nice and like a healthy, fluffy look. That youthful, thick, fluffy brow. So I'm going to build mine up slightly with my e.l.f. ultra precise brow in cool brown. For me, when I thicken up my brow, I try to go on top of it a little bit just to add some rather than getting a more droopy look like this ends up leading to more of a lifted look. And then we can really get some thickness by going through it with some brow fast sculpt and combing upward with that. Another step to take is just using that spoolie that's on the other end and letting yourself see kind of get a preview of how your brow is gonna look when you let it have that lift. I've been eating so well this week. I've been doing so good. And I saw that there's a restaurant near me that does a pizza buffet. And that's kind of all I can think about now. Okay, brushing up, this is the spoolie end. Then we can fluff them a little bit more with this brow fast sculpt, especially with the side of the brush that has the longer bristles. So this isn't going to lay down as much product, but you are going to get that benefit of the hold and the fluff. So I don't know if you'll be able to tell a whole lot, but I am kind of helping my brows reach up a bit. I don't need to have gargantuan caterpillar brows, but I just want them to have that fluff, you know? Oh, hello. Do you guys realize it's 540? It's 540 and they've come in with their caboodles. <laughs> I love you. Soft, fluffy, full on the brows. Now for the eyes. We're gonna, of course, use Milani Eyeshadow Primer. The eye kind of follows along, as far as eyeshadow goes, it's gonna follow along with the mindset of the blush, where it's present, it looks finished and done, it's kind of lightly glowy and maybe a little bit contoured, but it's not heavy, it's not smoky, and I think what really makes the statement is the liner and lash. Pretty much across the board, I've seen a brightness around the inner corner, um, I've seen a lightness on the lid, and I feel like I can accomplish that with this Ms. Nude York palette here from the Balm. It's really cute. It's the kind of thing a neutral palette lover would enjoy. It does have some of those pops of shimmer here here and here, and then the rest are like classic mattes, really smooth, 
cool mats in a lot of cases. What I'm going to do first is go into Hell's Kitchen right here, this kind of like dusty rose, with my Profusion Crease Brush. And that'll help us accomplish just this really soft, easy, not too dark crease. So you'll recall the Balm did the Nude Tude palette. Do you remember that years ago? It was truly awesome. And to me, it kind of ranked above, like we had our Naked palette from Urban Decay, we had our Natural Eye from Too Faced, and we had Nude Tude from the Balm. And it was absolutely wonderful. And then they did spin-offs of that with Nude Dude and Nude Beach, and they were all just funny and cute. And I kind of feel like this palette is their way of bringing back that concept a little bit. Even though I know there are tons of neutral palettes on the market, you probably have some similar shades so you don't have to feel like, oh, I have to go out and get that very thing she's using. It's again brand new. It may or may not be on the website by the time I'm shooting this video but it's probably coming soon. Look at that soft haze. Okay, that's exactly what we're going for. And then I love this color in the palette, this matte right here called How We Met. It's not a super bright highlight. It's what it is, is the perfect shade to put on the outside and blend any kind of crease action back into your skin, just flawlessly. Love when there's a color like that. It'll be the most boring looking shade in the palette, but it'll be useful to you, I promise. I feel like in the looks I've seen, there's a lot of glow happening all over the lid. We've got a couple of shimmers here. I'm gonna go to this one and we're gonna take that first around the inner corner. I've seen brightness across the board around inner corners, okay? Like a glossy brightness. I'm just using a small flat brush. Maybe I might brighten it up with this other shade too, just to see which sort of takes the lead. They're both good, pigmented, shiny. Now we go into this one and we're going to take that all across the lid. Nothing fancy here, just lightness and brightness all across. And then I might give myself just a little more darkness. I'm going to go to this Astoria of My Life one right here, this cool shade, kind of mid-tone. A little bit of that in the deepest part of my crease, just to enhance that shadowed look a bit, now that I see how it's all coming together. We're just following the crease from the innermost part all the way over to the edge. So any shadow you have that's kind of a cool gray, grayish brown, shadows that you feel like provide that naturally contoured look to the eye, go for them. And it seems like there's very little done to the lower lash line outside of lower lash mascara. So I'm just gonna do some more of that shade I just used, just really lightly. Almost like you wouldn't even be sure it's there but it's gonna define my eye just a little bit more, okay? See the difference? Like, I can tell that it's on that eye, but it's super duper subtle. Okay, there we go. I feel like my inner corner isn't quite as bright as I want it to be, so I'm gonna add a little bit of Cookie from Benefit, same brush I'd been using, and just really spotlight that. So I just feel like it's a key part of the look in all of my examples. My inner corner goes kind of deep in there, so you might have to get close to see it, but it's there. Next up, we're gonna do a winged liner, and once we do our lash, the lash is gonna really nicely follow that wing, and it's all gonna give like the perfect cat-eyed, lash-thickened kind of look. So I'm using my Sephora. This is my colorful Wink It Felt Liner, the waterproof in the shade Little Black Dress. Cookie Monster coming out to play. We're gonna go all across our upper lash line. We get out to the edge, not quite to the outer edge. Now I have a fairly round eye. So before I get to the very corner of my eye, that's when I start taking off with my wing in the direction of the tail of my brow. I'm not doing a huge wing, but it's gonna be there. There we go, got our little wing. Okay, again, taking off for the wing before we totally hit the outer corner of the eye. I salvaged that one. I thought that wing was not gonna work for a second, but I need to add a little more thickness over here. Oh, a retractable brush. We're pretty good with our wing. We've got our lightness on the lid. We've got our soft, gentle crease. We're gonna curl the lashes. 
and get our lashes nice and full. I'm going to use my Falsy Surreal Lash today. I've been really liking this one. And when I'm not putting on a false lash, I actually have started kind of combing through between coats and it works so well, like it gives a really nice effect. You just gotta track down a metal lash comb because that's about the only thing that'll really do it. But the lash we're gonna put on is like a half lash, so it is pretty important that you do get your whole lash really well coated with the mascara. You can't be like, well, I'm just gonna pop on a false lash, who cares? It's only gonna be on like the outer part of the eye, so we really wanna give it a nice base of lashes to melt into if you know what I mean. There are these half lashes from Amazon that I love so much and they're just a little thicker and longer than your standard like Ardell half lash and I've been using them on here on and off for months. But I'll of course link to them and everything else below. But there's our mascara. Love you. Love you hun. There we are with our Maybelline. And now my half lash looks like this, sorry about the chip nail. You can see a good amount of outer length. So that's gonna just sit on here. And what I said earlier about it like giving that thickness but following kind of the direction of the wing, it's gonna be really pretty. I took my dollar store lash glue with me when I went somewhere last week. I put it in my purse. I'm gonna have to bust out one of my backups. This is from Ioni and you can find this at Dollar Tree for $1.25 and it's like the best lash glue. It's as good for your lash line as a lash glue can be, you know, it's formaldehyde free. And if you've tried doing like full strip lashes and you find them kind of like hard to control, hard to manage, consider the half lash because, you know, you're not going to have to worry about trimming it up from left to right like, oh, it's going to be too long for my eye, you know, it is going to work well in that sense but it, there's just not as much maneuvering that needs to be done. And you can still get all the thickness and all the, you know, the beautiful lift. So I think you guys are gonna love this. So I'm gonna put it on the outer part of my eye. The inner part is going about to the, like the far inner part of my iris. That's how much it takes up of my eye. So you push that down, push the outside down and make sure as it sits there and dries that you're maintaining that lift, okay? So pretty, really making me think of what I'm seeing on the Victoria's Secret models. And if you want a lighter look than this, then you go for those Ardell half lashes because those are shorter and they're more subtle. And then we're gonna kind of balance that with some lower lash mascara. I'm gonna be putting Cali Gray Come Hell or High Water on the lower lashes. Um, I'm not going for some super bright and lower inner rim. I'm just not seeing that left and right on my reference pictures. And then we're already scheming about that lip. You know, we want that, I call it baby lips. You know, it's a gentle pink. It looks really kind of natural, but very glossy and very full. Those lashes are laying down right on top of the eyeliner, okay? And you can grab a little extra mascara just to make sure. Just kind of make sure everything's well combined. We're gonna do our lower lash. Kind of do it to your preference. Now we're thinking about lips, and I'm gonna fill in the lips with kind of a pinky lip liner. Um, this is from Buxom, and the shade is called Dangerous Dolly. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that on my lips, and I'm gonna ever so slightly overline. Just let it come up and out a little bit. Nothing real drastic, but we want the lips to look really full. And then fill it in with that too. I don't want it to start looking too dark, so I'm gonna take a kind of a light lipstick. I'm gonna take a little bit of Beige Eden from L'Oreal. This is kind of a nude lipstick and go over the lips with that. Keep it light. And then a light kind of pinky gloss on top. I'm gonna to try this Milani Keep It Full in Sparkling Pink. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Something that would offer a little more pink color, but not too bubblegum. Take it all the way out to your outer edge. 
Loving the way this is coming together. A little finishing touch that I pretty much always do on my look is take a light powder like Kosas Cloud Set or the closest thing, and I'm using the shade Airy, closest thing to Airy from the drugstore is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in the shade Porcelain. But just grab a little bit of that and I put that kind of on the seam of where under eye meets blush. And it's just, it ends up looking so perfect there. You can do some around your nose. It kind of helps with staying power, I think, too. But woo, we're really achieving the look I was hoping for, which is that subtle eye that's really framed by a beautiful lash. Now we can take these rollers out. See what I mean by them giving the hair a shape, but not a really drastic curl? The hair's a big part of the look, I feel. Like, you can't really authentically pull off the look and have it be a messy bun day. Here's what the hair is doing right now, freshly out of the roller. Spray a little hairspray on, like kind of lift the hair in sections around here. Then I'm gonna tip my hair over, really work my fingers into my hair, and then flip it back. And I'm working my fingers into the scalp. I call these shampoo fingers, okay? Point of that is to take all those sections, you know, your hair was sitting there sectioned off by these rollers for the longest time. It takes those sections and it brings them together a little bit. Okay, see, volume. Let me know how would you pull off this look? You know, what products, what certain elements of the look do you think are important? Again, for me, it was really like letting those um, outer lashes frame and lift the eye. That soft but really full lip. We have the skin that's been contoured, but it's not super exaggerated with the blush. I'm pleased with the look. Like I said, I'm not going to be on any runways today, but I'm happy with the way it turned out. Thank you so much for watching, my friends, and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Love you. Bye.